This is an introduction to probability proportional to size sampling. What is PPS sampling? Well, probability proportional to size means the probability of a transaction being selected for testing is proportional to the transaction size. The larger the transaction, the more likely the transaction will be included in the sample. This is the kind of sampling that's used to test transactions of a client that are included in a balance or to test subsidiary balances that are included in a client's balance. The purpose of the test is to see if the transactions are recorded correctly and to help determine if the account balance is fairly stated. Generally, we try to determine if there are too many overstatements or if there are too many understatements with this kind of testing. Some common examples are to choose a set of customers to send accounts receivable confirmation letters or we could use this kind of sampling to choose revenue transactions to test revenue recognition for example to trace invoice to sh invoices to shipping documents or we might use PPS sampling to choose inventory items to test count when we observe a client's physical inventory. Some underlying assumptions for PPS, these are things that are supposed to be true if we're using this kind of sampling, are the misstatement rate or the number of errors. The number of errors is expected to be less than 1% of all the transactions. This is not talking about how much the account is misstated by. This is talking about the number of different errors that there are. The second assumption is that there are many subsidiary balances or many transactions to test. Generally, the statistics work as long as there are 2,000 or more. And finally, there's the underlying assumption that the error in any one transaction or subsidiary balance is not more than 100%. Well, when you think about it, if a client records a balance at $100 and the balance is supposed to be zero, it's 100% overstated. If the, if the percent of error is more than that, more than 100%, PPS sampling cannot accommodate, can, cannot include that kind of error in the calculations. There are some pretty big advantages of using this kind of sampling, which is why it's the most common and it's the kind of sampling built into all auditing software. PPS sampling automatically chooses the largest individual transactions and subsidiary balances to test. And we'll see how that works in a minute. That means it automatically includes all of the individually material transactions. You don't have to go and check and see if it captured those. And it automatically includes the largest transactions of the set that are individually immaterial. So it chooses the biggest ones to include in the sample. It doesn't just take any old 100 it includes the 100 largest. Therefore, it results in testing the most dollars with the smallest possible sample. The disadvantages of using PPS, well, it cannot be used to test balances that are at zero. And low balances, balances that are understated, have almost no chance of being included in a sample. So it's not a good kind of testing if you're testing the expense side. It's not a way to find understatements of accounts payable or understatements of expenses. It also can't be used for errors over 100%. So if something is supposed to be 100 and the client has it recorded at 500, that's, a, that's an error of more than 100%. And it gives very conservative treatment of any errors you do find. And we'll see that when we learn how to do the calculations. It takes any small percent error that you find and really blows it up, projects it as a much bigger error to, in the population. And because of that, this kind of sampling fairly frequently results in re rejecting transactions where we find any misstatements. Let's take a minute to see how PPS selects the sample. So, let's say we have a set of balances and the customer 
balances are shown here. We have a set of customer balances in customer number order. Customer number one owes, t er, owes us 10,000. Customer number two owes us 40,000 and so forth. We're going to learn how to compute the sampling interval. Let's say for, the ex for this example the sampling interval is 60,000. What you should have read is that this means that PPS sampling will include each sixty thousandth dollar as a hook into the sample. So the first thing the auditors have to do is compute this column which is the account running balance. So customer number one owes us ten thousand. Customer number two owes us forty which means the total owed to us after customer two is fifty thousand. Customer number three owes us 25, the running balance goes up to 75. Customer number four owes us 35,000, what's the running balance? 75,000 plus 35,000, 75,000 plus 35,000 equals 110,000 is the running balance. What's the running balance for customer number five? Well, customer number five started at dollar number 110,001 and added 75,000. So the running balance is 110,000 plus 75,000 equals 185,000. Okay, so once we have the running balance computed. Then we're going to try to use these dollar hooks. Dollar number 60,000. Where is that hiding in the running balance? It's not in customer 1. Customer 2 only takes us to 50,000. 60 is somewhere between here and here. It's somewhere in customer number 3. Customer number 3 includes the sixty thousandth dollar customer number three gets a letter to confirm accounts receivable. Who's holding the hundred and twentieth thousandth dollar? Well, customer number three holds us up to seventy five. Customer number four takes us up to one hundred and ten. Somewhere between four and five is the hundred and twenty thousandth dollar. It's customer number five who's holding the hundred and twenty thousandth dollar. Who's holding the cu the hundred and eightieth thousandth dollar? Well, it's customer number five again. So what this tells you is number three and number five get tested. They're included in the sample. And no, you don't send two letters to customer number five. It's just that customer number five has two of the dollar hooks. So you can see that the larger balances are not 100% tested, but customer number five, the biggest balance on the page, is definitely being tested. So that's the concept behind sample selection for PPS. And when we get to doing this kind of sampling and idea, you see that the idea printouts actually explain what you see on your screen here, not in red messy writing, but they explain to you how the sample items got into the sample. The other videos regarding PPS sampling show you how to compute the sampling interview and sample size and how to analyze the results of sample testing.